world leaders are on the edge. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story, world leaders are in turmoil as the banking elites are about to unleash the unthinkable. And what I want you to understand is at first, this is going to seem like a good thing, but I'm about to show you this one simple move could destabilize the entire global currency market and plunge the global economy into a deep recession. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show, Canadian North Resources is back. You can find them on the TSXV under the symbol CNRI and on the OTCQX under the symbol CNRSF. And they just announced a huge increase in indicated metals and their stock is coming out of a bottoming pattern. This is a chart you don't want to miss out on. Some big players have come in and put a stop. It's starting to move higher. And this is a simple buy and fly deal. I'm going to make the case of why a stock could as much as double in price. Stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. Now, let's head over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up with a headline, German inflation slows further as the ECB readies June rate cut. Now, at first glance, this seems like a very good thing. Hey, central bankers are going to cut rates. The problem is, as I'm going to show you, this could destabilize global currency markets. Now, remember, we've been talking about how the yuan in the yen are on the edge of an abyss getting ready to collapse this move won't help that at all in fact it'll make it even worse as consumer prices rose an annual 2.3 percent last month this in germany down from 2.7 percent in february and less than the 2.4 percent median estimate by economists Food costs now were a key driver of the slowdown. And if you look at this chart and you think, wait a minute, that looks somewhat familiar. Well, it should because it looks much like the U.S. Consumer Price Index. That shown in blue against the Consumer Price Index. All items total for Germany in red. And you can see the relationship here is that we are indeed in a global economy and that we are coupled together. So where inflation goes in other major industrial countries, well, the U.S. is indeed likely to follow, suggesting that any notion that central bankers here in the U.S. believe that inflation is going higher, well, what we're seeing around the world says that's not likely at all. But the overall picture is still that of a broad weakening, allowing the ECB to prepare investors for the first reduction in borrowing costs in June. And this is indeed a dangerous move, because what I want to understand is that central bankers typically work together. They actually move policy in similar forms because they start to have these divergent policies, and it has a huge impact on currency markets. We're seeing that in China. We're seeing that in Japan. Soon we're going to see it in the European Union. Union and it's not a good thing at all because as we look you know that of course the Fed talks about inflation and central bankers talk about it but we know there isn't a strong relationship between the consumer price index and the federal fund rate now something they want you to believe but it just really isn't there but yet in Germany fewer companies are planning to raise their prices particularly in consumer-related industries. This from an IFO Institute report reached released recently. A lingering concern is labor market resilience and the resulting large gains in wages that could keep underlying inflation elevated for longer. Of course, we busted this myth before. We'll look at it again, that the issue here is about what is coming to the currency markets. So why don't you understand first what's going on in Germany, how policymakers are gonna react, and what really is the underlying problem in the German economy because it's getting worse and much faster there. Confirmation of moderation and pay increases will only arrive slowly, prompting more officials to exclude a rate cut at next week's policy meeting, but they're going to do it at some point. Because here we can see from S&P Global to Germany manufacturing PMI, look at this, it's down to 41.9 from 42.5. It's getting worse. The German manufacturing sector is contracting at a faster rate, but look what you see in this notes here. Factory job cuts deepen. This is something I said is coming, and it's coming in a big way. Now, we just talked about the U.S. data in the show yesterday that everyone believes is an island from the rest of the world, that it will hit here with a lag and not too far in the future. The drop in the headline PMI in March did, however, mass slower decreases in both new orders and output. That said, the latest declines remain sharp overall amid reports of still weak demand conditions at home. Here's the key one. And abroad, this will again affect the U.S. 
Export sales continued falling steeply at the end of the first quarter, although the rate of decline was the weakest in 11 months. So here you see all the evidence to suggest that the labor market there is indeed going to go. But you'll note that central bankers get fixated, of course, on something called wage increases. Now you want to understand that if demand is going away, guess what else goes with it? Man, for your currency, that's a huge problem. Here you see the consumer price index, this from the US, that in blue, against average hourly earnings of production and non-supervisory employees, that in red. And what do you know is that usually, not always, but usually average hourly earnings tends to follow inflation. And it makes a lot of sense because if companies are raising their prices, then they can pass some of those gains on to the employees in terms of raises. And so that's the factor here that the reality is if unemployment claims start to move higher, and we're talking about Germany at the moment, then this is dangerous because there's no chance inflation sticks at all. And that means, of course, the ECB then cuts rates and we start to destabilize the global currency markets because that means the dollar is headed higher. Here we can see from one of the executive board members, he warned last week against putting too much emphasis on salaries. See, we, he agrees with us on this one, saying the Eurozone's fragile economy needs workers pay to catch up with prices in order to sustain the kind of recovery that's hoped will gradually take hold. The reality is it's not working at all. That's a huge problem. That means already demand for currency is gonna go down. What happens after monetary easing begins is unclear. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Things are going to start destabilizing in a big way. Several officials have stressed the need to remain data dependent and judge developments on a meeting by meeting basis, even as others appear to back more rapid loosening because the underlying issue here is that people believe that central bankers have control of their currencies. This is absolutely critical. And so if you see the ECB cutting, that means of course people are going to try to dump the Euro. And what does that mean for the dollar? It's going to go up. Well, as far as the yen and the yuan goes, that's already a problem now. As Bank of America sees the yen plunging to 160 per dollar if the Fed delays cuts, and as of right now, that seems to be the case. It's a view that chimes with other strategists who anticipate any BOJ intervention to only offer brief support of the yen. The currency is already weak and beyond levels that prompted authorities to enter the market in 2022, and officials have ramped up warnings against speculators saying, if you don't stop, we're going to crush you like the bugs you are. Well, the problem is they know very well from past experience that these interventions, well, they don't work, which is what I've said before. It's mostly a threat to create some caution and two-way risk in the market. They know everything depends on the Fed. That means the Fed doesn't cut everyone else's. The dollar goes up, puts downward pressure, not just on the yen, not causing just problems there, also in China and then in Europe as Yuan faces mounting pressure as green shoots failed to lift move. And we said that was gonna happen. Everyone said, look, there's a huge rebound in China. And what did I say? Look at the Yuan. If it's weak, that means there's no demand for it, that anything you see in the economic data becomes transitory. Sure enough, that's exactly what's happening. As China's currency slid to a four month low against the dollar and onshore trading this on Tuesday and came within a few pips of the lower end of the trading range permitted by the PBOC. In a more freely traded offshore market, the yuan has been hovering at a weaker level than the onshore daily limit for eight consecutive sessions. Signs of stress are also growing in the options market. It's not just the options market we're seeing stress. It's all over the Chinese economy. So you can imagine, the ECB comes out and says, hey, you know what, we're gonna cut rates. Traders rack, they're gonna buy the dollar, they're gonna sell the euro. That means the yuan's gonna go down, that means the yen's gonna go down, and look what's going on in Chinese economy. They need money to come back in the country. They need it to stimulate their economy. And look at this, Country Garden extends sales slump as financial woes pile up, and a decline in their currency isn't going to help much because what we see here is a transaction pledged 83% year on year. And what did I say back when the crisis started there that consumers would not buy homes, they would not go out and say, hey, you know what, I wanna buy a home from an insolvent developer. They said, no way, that's what we're seeing as a sales drought exasperates the cash crunch for Country Garden, whose crisis entered a new chapter after it made a surprise announcement last week that will miss a deadline for reporting 
and results due to insufficient information. The stock has now been suspended from trading in Hong Kong due to delay. And earlier this year, a Hong Kong court received a creditor's petition to wind up the company, meaning sell off some assets to pay off those defaults it did on its dollar debt. And so a weaker yuan here is not going to help at all. It's going to cause even more problems as China's property sector has so far shown little hint of a turnaround. This is exactly what I said. Private data showed March's home sales extended a steep decline from a year earlier, and agencies don't expect a notable recovery this month. Well, maybe not even this year. And home buyers are avoiding defaulted developers. Shocking. On concerns about their ability to complete a housing projects. Now, this is just obvious. You know what? And look what happened. Beijing came in and said, okay, you know what? We have an issue you here you're insolvent and you need to build finish some homes so people can buy them well, well good we'll give money to the banks the banks will give money to the property developers they'll finish it and everyone will be happy except people didn't buy it at all just as i predicted and its closest rival china evergram was ordered to liquidate in january this is dangerous even china vanky has also seen his sales slump worsen as it tries to stave off default, but good luck with that. And now let's talk about the US economy here because this all comes back to the dollar. You know, if we see the dollar start to rally here because of these divergent central bank policies, it's going to cause a problem because right now everyone believes, look, look at the US economy. It's strong, it's robust, the labor market's intact. And then you get to the jolts report. As the US job openings holding steady shows labor market resilience, but the trend continues to go down. The number of available positions edged up to 8.76 million, mainly reflecting a pickup in finance and state and local government. From a downward revise, 8.75 million in January. Keep in mind, we continue to see downward revisions. That's something that we're getting accustomed to now the data. The problem with the JOLTS report, my friends, is it's one of the most inaccurate reports there is because nobody responds to this thing. About 70% of it's made up by the people who actually are in charge of creating the report. Now, they did note there was an increase in hiring. We'll see if that lasts because the ISM said, well, we saw an increase in firings. But how does this matter to the consumer price index? Well, there's a reason. This was Janet Yellen's favorite statistic as job openings shown as the jolt in red against the consumer price index in blue. Shown on a year over year rate of change, you can see that as job openings go down, you can have transitory increases in inflation, but they don't last at all. And here you can see the case job openings heading lower, inflation cooling off, suggesting that at some point the Fed's going to have to cut, but maybe they're going to get pressure, of course from these other central bankers as we see currencies start to destabilize and crash where central bankers and governments cannot stop the free fall that would be dangerous because if you look at the dollar if we were to get a surge in dollar, as I mentioned in yesterday's show, this could be a boost to the Biden administration's case to get the Fed to cut, because if that happens, as we're seeing here now as a nominal broad U.S. dollar index in blue, that, of course, will hurt the U.S. economy, make us less competitive on the global stage, and that means less workers needed, and sure enough, that could send the jolts report lower. The other factor that I've been worrying about in a big way is the jolts report and the speculation in the U.S. equity markets. You can know that there is a long training relationship between the Wilshire 5000, that's a total U.S. stock market, and the JOLT survey here shown in red. And what do we see is when the market goes down, but the JOLTS is going up. Well, that means the market's wrong. And here you can see JOLTS going down, market rallies. Well, there's an adjustment there. And now we're seeing the biggest a link apart between these two suggesting one's got to go up or the other's got to come down with something we think is going up in a big way is our sponsor for today's show the stock canadian north resources you can find them on the tsxv under the symbol cnri on the otcqx under the symbol cnrsf let's talk about what's going on let's give you an update because if you missed them the first time they're a canadian mining company at a late stage exploration and development of a mining property this their Ferguson Lake product there in Canada that they own a hundred percent of that has abundant base metals and here you can see why Canadian resources well they're critical metals for clean energy electric vehicles and high-tech industries we know that regardless of what's going on there's going to be more demand for these metals as governments continue to push green technology 
industries and demand for it is going to only go up. And here we can see from a metallurgical recovery point, high recoveries to support mine development, Canadian North recesses, they have that as well. And I want you to see something on their corporate team because this is important. Everyone's heard of Sprott. Well, look at this. One of the directors, Rick Brown, he manages the China desk of Sprott. So you can imagine if Sprott is involved, there is a big potential for this company. And that means their stock price is so going to make the case of how it can double and is bottoming out right now, as you're going to see based on a big trade in volume coming in, putting a halt to the downward move, setting up the next leg higher. And on the back of that, we saw this press release back on March 19th as Canadian North Resources reports substantial increase of copper, nickel, cobalt, palladium, and platinum. How about that? That's a 172% increase of indicated mineral resources. That is outstanding. And that's setting up a move on their stock. Here, we're looking at the TSXV. And what do you know? You see all this volume that came in on this move down? That's what you call stopping volume, where some big players come in and say, you know what? We're going to put a halt to the price decline and sure enough what happens a bottom starts to form and it begins the next move higher now you can look here and there isn't a side view on this but you notice where the stock was trading right around two dollars a share that sets up where the next move is and here you can see on the otcqx now the txxv with cnri the otcqx that is CNRSF. We can see the same bottoming form here, but the volume profiles up here at $2 a share, suggesting that indeed what will likely happen as this bottom gets put in, that the stock could pop more than double, making this simple a buy and fly scenario that you can take advantage of. But as always, with any company we feature on our show, you don't have no obligation to purchase their stock. Be sure to do your own research before placing any trades. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.